everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Oh boy, oh boy, have we all been waiting for this. King's Quest VI, arguably the best, I don't even think arguably, just the best in the series, bar none. So I put it up to a poll because there are multiple versions of King's Quest VI. There is the original DOS version, uh, with and without voice acting, and then there's the CD version, which offers some more like high res uh, character portraits. I'll let you make up your own mind if you like it. Uh, I, while I do appreciate the more high res character portraits and the animation, and everything, I don't really think it fits in with the, with the rest of the game. It feels like it's kind of, I don't know, the juxtaposition just doesn't work for me. But anyway, the my one of my favorite parts about this game, and I've watched it a million times when I used to play it. I wa I made my parents watch it with me is the animated opening. So get yourself a, a bucket of popcorn. This goes on for a while. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontry. Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not Watch. thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. That's another one of the really big differences. I love this shot of the... Of the throne room. I absolutely adore this. Back in, what was this, 90 something, 92, 93 this came out? This was cutting edge stuff right here. Even though this is kind of postage, si postage stamp size video, eh, that's the way it all was. You had to fit it onto a single CD. Go figure that out. But anyway, the, the opening cinematic differs wildly from version to version. I'd love to show you the original, but sorry. I wish you were here. How does she remember me? Kasima! Wait! Mother! Mother, come quick! It's like I never left Alexander, the Alexander, what on earth? You're white as a ghost! Mother, I saw Kasima. She was in that, the mirror. That look on his face, I love it. He's just so permanently stunned and unblinking. How? The stars! I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. Sometime later... Now, this... This part of the opening cinematic for the CD version was extended a little too long because they're just like, oh man, we made these awesome bird models. We gotta show... We gotta show this off. And this... We stare at birds for seriously, like, about a minute straight. But in the original version, it was all different voice actors, uh, the setups were different, the animation, everything was different. You know what, I actually might even kind of, uh, I don't want to show it to you now, I don't want to slow things down too much. I'll make a bonus video or something, and I'll show you the original, sort of, uh, disc version of the opening cinematic. Oh! Oh, sorry, the birds are gone, we got things to do. Okay, boat. I tease, even though this seems really slow paced right now, back in the 90s, this was, this was it. Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. Alexander quickly learns that there are no stars to navigate to by the daytime. Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! The crowd goes wild. <sighs> but isn't Red Sky at Night Sailor's Delight? Things go downhill really quickly. 
As the ship nears the shore, day turns to night and the sea turns violent. the delicateness and grace of a Windows screensaver, in come the titles. So what sets apart King's Quest VI from its competitor not competitors, but sort of the other chapters in the, uh, in the series? Professional voice acting this time around, like Hollywood. There are so many big name voice actors and just actors in this game that I'm going to have to kind of introduce them to you as we come across them. And I, uh, oh, there's just so much, so much, so much. Okay. Jane Jensen um, was director and writer on this game. Uh, she's also known for doing the expertly written Gabriel Knight series. There have actually been books written on the Gabriel Knight that Jane Jensen wrote, which I'm really excited about. Yep, she did all the dialogue and the text. So very, very exciting. Jane is a great writer. And up until now, a game has never been presented to me like this before with sort of like movie credits and it really lets you know you're in for something special. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. Um... To think they made it in the lifeboats all the way back to Daventry. How long were you on the sea exactly? Weren't you on the sea for like weeks and weeks? That's a lot. Okay, well, they're probably fine. I'm sure everything's great. Now, some of you who are fans of the Mass Effect series of games may have gotten sort of a, a tinge of recognition from the narrator's voice. Uh, the narrator is Bill Ratner, uh, who recently I know as being uh, Ambassador Udina from uh, Mass Effect 1, 2, and I imagine 3. It's been a while since I've played those. And Alexander here is played by Robbie Benson, who I remember as being uh, the Beast from Disney's Beauty and the Beast, and all its many, many reprisals thereof. So yeah, an all-star cast, but I'll pick that up as we go along. So first of all, yes, Alexander now picking up from uh, pretty much right on the coattails of King's Quest V, we rescued Kasima. everything's great, she got whisked off to the land of the Green Isles, which uh, we hope is here, but we don't know for sure yet, but spoilers, it totally is. And we literally start from bare nothing, we got nothing on us. Look, if you look at our inventory... Alexander is carrying nothing. <laughs> Very awkwardly, we're told that Alexander is carrying nothing. But as with all these kind of uh, painted backdrop types of games, things that are interactable are pretty easy to find. Like we see this glint over here in the sand. Uh, this board looks a little bit out of place. I think uh, in the future when things became sort of anti-aliased and would be able to blend into the background better, it was a little bit more difficult. But until then, hey, things are easier for us. What are these two glinting pixels here? Alexander's royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped from his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. The one thing I don't kind of like about the uh, narration is that every single, well, damn near every single line of dialogue that, that Bill Ratner has to say starts with the word Alexander, 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 Alexander. My ring now. Can I talk to it? The ring in the sand cannot talk. They actually had a line of dialogue just for that. Can I talk to the rock? The rocks are silent as they have been for ages untold. That is really poetic for something so stupid. The plank seems bored and does not reply. Interesting. I never tried this before. I'm going to talk to everything in the game now just to hear what they wrote down. No one remains aboard the broken vessel. The currents continue to murmur 
but they do not reply to Alexander. Hello? There's no reply to Alexander's call. There is a quick glimpse of the new high-res portraits, which also do have uh, lip sync, which I don't think the other ones do. They just have your basic lippy flaps. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. You'll also notice, uh, for those who have played this game a lot, the sound might be a little bit different than what you're used to, so I'm using uh, my new Roland MT32, so the music will be very nice and very rich, but a little bit different than what you're used to. I think uh, the only thing that would be static is the opening logo, because that was a movie, and the opening cinematic, because that was also sort of hard-coded in. Hello, Plank. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Hmm, it does look the same color. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Yep, Alexander, 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 Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Alexander's treasure box lies partially buried in the sand. It must have washed ashore with the other ship debris. Money may indeed talk. But the treasure box can't. I just adore that they went through the trouble to not only write down dialogue for trying to talk to everything, but also make our poor narrator reiterate everything. Can I talk to the coin? Oh, wait, we don't know it's a coin. Oh, I can't talk anyway. The box must have opened in the sea, spilling its treasure. Everything has been washed away except for one coin of Devontree. Not now. Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. And always leave things as you found it. Alexander moves the plank back to its original position. He's not sure why. All right, I already turned the speed up a little bit because otherwise he moves at a rather crawl. So let's start exploring. Where are we? Ooh, pretty. My gosh, this is a pretty game. My goodness. A hollow in the trunk of the old tree forms a perfect nesting place for wildlife. In the distance, a majestic castle shines in the sun. To the left, a small village seems to invite the weary traveler. Can I talk to anybody from here? Hello! The villagers might be more responsive if Alexander moved closer. <laughs> I love it. Whatever inhabitants might live in the distant castle, they would never hear Alexander from here. <laughs> it's Cosima home! The old tree must have witnessed many intrigues and many tragedies, but it keeps its stories to itself. The rocks are silent. The path wanders on its way without comment. <laughs> the ferns may appreciate the sound of Alexander's voice, but they do not reply. The people in town must think I'm insane. It's like, I haven't even made it to town yet. And it's like, he's talking to the ferns. Hello. Is anyone about? Alexander gets no reply. What you about? Okay, well, we can go to the castle. That's probably the best place to start, because we want to know if Cosima's around. That's where we should go. She would live in a castle. And it's got towers. We saw the flashback in the mirror. Or was that real time? I don't know the technology of these mirrors. Whoa. Alexander is standing in front of a fabulous castle. The path from the crossroads leads to the castle entrance. The entrance is being guarded by two dog-like creatures. Just call them dogs. Let's just call a spade a spade. There's a little hut just off the path. Perhaps the guard dogs have an occasional use for it, but it looks empty now. I'm gonna need a key the size of Tokyo for this. I'm hiding! The bushes are too prickly to reply. <laughs> there is no one in the guard hut with whom to communicate. I'm in here, can I talk to me? The bushes are too prickly to reply. The castle is as silent as marble. And marble is really famous for being really reticent and quiet. The castle is... The castle appears to be of Moorish architecture. Its marbled walls and delicate inlaid mosaics are unlike anything Alexander has ever experienced before. His own home, though lovely and dear to his heart, seems rough-hewn compared to this delicate beauty. The castle appears to be of Moorish architecture.
you can actually learn about Moorish architecture in King's Quest VI, another reason why it's one of the best games ever made. How about the mountains in the background? Far beyond the castle, Alexander can see a vista of mountains and trees. Whether they are part of this island or another is impossible to tell from here. Um, it's really impossible to tell from here because you're looking at the back wall of the guardhouse. Hello, mountains. Echo, echo. If Alexander wishes to speak here, perhaps he should address the guard dogs. Wow, so if you, if you just click on anything random and people are nearby, they actually wrote in. It's like, hey, you should probably talk to this really obvious person over here. Two guards take their stance in front of the castle doors. They look quite fierce and have the stiff, blank expression of soldiers on formal duty. Hmm. Maybe they're like the soldiers in, uh, in London, like the tower guards? The guards of the castle gate look like efficient fighters, and there are doubtless more of them inside. Alexander decides not to try to force his way in. I'm not trying to force him. I wanted to, like, try and tickle him and make them smile. Alexander politely addresses the odd-looking guards at the castle door. You guys are funny looking. to learn more about his predicament. Good day to you guards. I was cast upon this Bing. island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is and who lives in this castle? Hey, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since El Hazaret arrived. Ah, don't be so rude, Gruff. He's not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad, and this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Uh, rather, what's left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown? But tell me, am I anywhere near the land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy! Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. Aye! The princess is indeed our treasure jewel to God, and we consider it an honor! An honor! Okay, so we are at the Land of the Green Isles. Fantastic. So, the Land of the Green Isles is made up of, I think, six or seven islands? Uh, and this is the biggest one, so it's kind of like the main island of Hawaii, and then there's, like, Maui and Oahu. Excuse me, guardsmen. Uh, uh, guard dogs. I've been traveling for months to see Princess Cosima. I would like an audience, please. I'm sorry, but the princess is not receiving visitors, particularly not strangers. I really must see the princess. Could I speak with someone in charge? Who are you that I should bother Captain Saladin? Huh? My name is Alexander. I am a prince of Daventry and a friend of the princess. A prince, is it? I see. Yeah, and I am lord of this dusty path. Step aside. You'll not be getting into this castle without some proof of your claims. Speaking of lord of the path, we haven't talked to the path yet. The path winds its way silently. Nope, oh, dang. Nothing new. Okay, so we need to prove our... Uh, royalty, and the music's kind of drowning out the speech a little bit, so I had to crank it down, as lovely as it is. Okay, well, we might as well do that while we're here, but where does this go? Oh, nice little side garden, eh? The path turns into dirt here and continues along the side of the castle. Is it also winding, but it has nothing to say? The path winds its way side... Yeah, that's a shame. Vines have begun to climb the castle's stucco walls. The side of the castle is one big blank wall. Remember this place. The bushes near the side wall of the castle have been left natural and unsculptured. Alexander is standing next to the side wall of a castle. Unlike the well-guarded castle entrance, this area is deserted. Perhaps the guards are confident that the wall itself is impregnable enough to stop any would-be intruders. Does look pretty sturdy, but what about these windows? The side of the castle is one big... Oh, okay, windows don't exist. Okay, well, let's use my royal insignia ring as sort of a uh, proof. Uh, oh, yeah, that's another difference between the high-res and the regular versions, that the, the detail on the inventory is really good, I gotta say. I like that part. Alexander is carrying a copper coin of Deventry. 
King Graham graces the front of the coin. Uh, unless your father looks like a giant D? I don't think so. Unless maybe that's the backside. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Which again, is just a very simple D. It's a very unimaginative seal. All right, here's my ring. Does that prove to who I am? Alexander decides to try his royal insignia ring on the guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible proof of his identity that he can think of. Perhaps this ring will convince you of my identity. It is the royal insignia ring of Daventry. Ha! I'm sure! Kiss it! Just let me take a look at that ring! Kiss it! Give me Nux! Well, uh, I'm sorry, your highness. It's just that princes are so uncommon in I am box. so royalty, look at my so crown. I'll wait here with my crown. Heavy is the head that wears the comically oversized crown. Oh, Captain Saladin. You'll recognize this voice. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, Tony but I'm sure Jay. Wazir al Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please, follow me. It's me or the pyre. Lord al Hazred, a visitor to see you. Whom, Prince whom, Alexander whom, of Daventry. Bing. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cosima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cosima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, Things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cosima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Cosima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cosima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cosima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. You should have called. May your journey home be swift. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. Whoop! <laughs> nice little sound effect there. Bink. You have had your hearing with Wizir al Hazred. I trust you'll respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, 
and they nod with understanding. Hellfire, hellfire, hellfire. Oh, got it. Great, so even Tony Jay's against me. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Now, Tony J always has to pay the bad guys, but I think even in this case, even though his voice sounds gruff and evil, Seldon's an okay egg. He's, he's all right. All right, so the plot of the game just kind of spilled all over us there. So we know from what we saw in the mirror, if it's true and to be trusted, that Cosima is up in one of these towers somewhere, just sort of, oh gosh, oh, if only someone would come and save me. That's pretty much all she does this entire game. She doesn't really move from that window until the the very end. Yeah, the Vizier is so obviously evil with, you know, he's olive skinned and swarthy, which is untrustworthy. He's got a beard. Oh, very untrustworthy. And also notice that little genie looking guy in the back. He will play a, a uh, he will play a rather prominent role in the adventures to come. Also notice um, if you were kind of a uh, eagle eyed, which is pretty easy to do because that steam is very static. So you kind of look around a little bit, but his eyes kind of glistened and glinted a little bit. Remember that. Okay, so we have been shut out of the castle by the vizier, so we really don't have much to do other than just kind of explore the surrounding area and see if we can figure out what's going on. Can the vizier be trusted? Oh, spoilers, no. Just taking a moment here just to appreciate the music, even though it's just kind of light and incidental. And what's cool also is that all the different little islands around have a different theme. Like this one's got sort of like the Arabian Nights theme. Uh, and then there's like an Alice in Wonderland theme. And then there's like a medieval sort of two, not Tudor, but uh, Old lamps Georgian for theme new. maybe. All right, I heard you. Thanks for the lamps. An old beggar is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. The peddler's pole provides convenient transportation of the lamp seller's wares. <laughs> there are six new lamps on the pole. So, old lamps for new, he says. And why is that? Well, first of all, let's talk to all the inanimate objects. The only thing the sign has to say is written all over its face. The window clearly has nothing to reflect upon at this time. Uh, old lamp! Shut up. Alexander might have more success trying to communicate inside the shop. The door may lead Alexander into conversation, but first, he must open it. Hello! Is anyone here? No one answers Alexander's shouted greeting. Not even... Perhaps he should find someone specific to talk to. Uh. Oh, hi. The man seems busy with his chores and isn't interested in Alexander. But he's not doing anything. He's just looking Old out the window. Hello. No. Windows face the street ah, from living quarters up. above the bookstore. A pair of red pants has been hung out to dry in the warm glow of the sun. It's weird because I never really took the time to look at everything kind of in depth. So thanks for bearing with me here. It's just sort of a nice little walk down memory lane for me. Alexander is standing on a sunny village street. There are open shops to his right, a hard packed path beneath his feet and palm trees waving over his head. To the north, a key shaped arch leads to another part of the village. Mm. Old Shut up. Okay, fine. What's your deal? Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old <laughs> lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Uh, I, I like that idea. I have a couple, like, sort of antique lamps around some oil burners. They're pretty. How fair are you, peddler? Hey, lad, have you an old lamp for me yet? Okay, you flap your lips a little bit weird there, but it's okay. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. All right, that'll come into play later. Can I ring the bell? 
Alexander can enter the building by using the shop's door. I guess he just assumed I wanted to try and burrow my way through the, uh, through the walls, but okay. Good day! Another recognizable voice. The pawn shop owner is a mysterious fellow. His face is old and inscrutable, and there's a glint of sheer iron in his gaze. Still, Alexander senses this is someone he can trust. Bink. King Bear, aww. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and oh. so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, and why the Crown has not done something about it is beyond me. But then, I am a shopkeeper. Not a politician, and can only hope for better days. Your accent is unconvincing, but I like you anyway. How bide you, good merchant? Quite well, though a purchase would not hurt me any. Is there nothing else to say? He's just like, I am a simple shopkeep. I have nothing to say. Buy something or get out. Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. Hmm, I prefer something a little bit more Dallas-based myself. <laughs> I, I, yeah. The world-famous talking bear has been sulking ever since his abduction from a small mountain community in California. He refuses to discuss real estate. There's a California reference in there somewhere, and I'm gonna find it. I found it. Okay, so apparently there's this world-famous talking bear plastic statue thing in Oakhurst, California, which is not too far from Sierra's offices. And it just has, like, an educational talking button thing you push. Alright, you, you get the idea. I don't get the real estate reference, but I didn't listen to the whole recording. I don't really plan to. Okay, learn something today about California... Lore. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. I can't talk to them. I see you have noticed my mechanical night. I've been tracking your gaze. She's a plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. I think you're lying. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its notes are fine and true. Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well used by one of the island's best painters. There's a lot of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Have you an interest in tinder boxes? This one is only slightly battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pad, and even a candle in case you find yourself with naught else to hold the flame. Oh, well, that's adorable. Okay, uh, what's this blue thing? An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Oh, look at that. Even way back when, they have a mint jar on the desk. The dusty shop remains peacefully quiet. The counter does not counter. Dang, I can't talk to the mints. Alexander takes a mint. Oh, it's, it's even emblazoned with a little M. The small green mint looks very tasty. I think you can eat them, but you're supposed to save this for later. DMD, what does it mean? Ah, what the heck. Down the hatch. I love M&Ms. Alexander eats the mint. Hmm, not bad. A little stale, perhaps. Oh, that's a shame. Alexander takes a mint. All right, we'll take some time to look at all these different curiosities in the shop, but let's get things moving here. All right, so let's see if he'll take this little copper coin of mine in trade for, well, anything. What's it worth? I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. Again. 
Now, what's cool about it, and I think I'll explain it in a second, though, but whatever we take, we can always bring back and then take something else. So it's like a lending library. So what do I need first? Uh, I think I need the flute first. I might be wrong. It doesn't really matter. You can always come back for it. But this is one of the more unforgiving older adventure games where it's not like it doesn't have the try again button. If you fail, you better have saved. I'll take the flute. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is Bing. a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. Hmm. A diminishing returns probably. It's like, oh, well, here's the flute. Well, you can have something even cheaper. Here, have, uh, here's, here's some lint, kid. Go. A small red drum beats no more on the shelves of the pawn shop. rat a tat tat That's... Kind of cute. That's almost as cool as the donk in the remake of King's Quest uh, 2? Yeah, 2. rat a tat tat The crystal ball remains perfectly clear and says nothing. Can I talk to the pelvis? He's speechless. How dynamic of you. We don't really have much use for our gold ring right now, but let's see if there's anything that the pawn guy has that this would be worth that might be useful to me can you tell me merchant what the value of this ring might be by the sands of the sea what a beauty what fine gold and masterful artistry this ring is quite valuable sir i would not feel right taking it in trade none of the items on display at my humble store are even close to the value of this ring truly well it would be hard to part with it anyway, I suppose. I appreciate your honesty, though. Uh, anybody else would be all like, Oh, well, this is pretty nice, I guess. Here, I'll. you can have the, the, the bear for it. Here, have the bear. You want the bear? All right, we'll come back here later and take a look around. Bye-bye. All right, Ali, how are you? Hello. I will be right up. By right now... Okay. Now, what can I do for you? Hmm, first of all, hello, black-cloaked stranger. Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. Now, one of the many, 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 many things I adore about this game and its art style is the framing of the interior shots, like you noticed in the... Uh, pawn shop, there was a lot of foreground objects. Same thing in the bookstore. We're looking through a bookshelf really close up, and then the scene is like only like this big, but it's it adds so much. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Hmm, I'm sure that's fine. A well padded leather chair, a small table, and a fuzzy rug have been arranged into a cheery reading area near the fire. It's also like Arabian times, and it seems really hot out. Why is the fire burning at all? A small fire burns in the fireplace, despite the warmth of the day outside. Perhaps the bookshop owner simply finds it comforting. Yeah, even the narrator's confused. It's like, I don't think you'd need that. An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title... Ye useful book of magic spells. Ooh, I'll need that. I know a little bit of magic from uh, King's Quest Three. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I am on the Isle of the Crown, Bing. but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> 
This is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. I like Ali. I like his attitude. I also wonder if you were to visit this place first before you went to the castle and learn that you were on the Isle of the Crown and actually in the Land of the Green Isles, if that dialogue would be a little bit different. Just another layer of depth in this game. So no matter how you play it, it's so open that you can do it in any order you want and you'll always get a slightly different experience and a slightly different story. All right, so I think we got things moving along pretty well. So what have we learned? We're on the land of the Green Isles, which may or may not contain about three or four islands. The ferry doesn't work. The islands are all fighting with each other. It's politically strained. Kasima is not coming down from her room and she's going to marry this weird uh, vizier guy who's so obviously evil and she's asking for help through the magic mirror. Okay, so something's definitely up here in the land of the girl. I see you back there. You stop giving me that glinty stink eye. So next time, I think it's about time we go and pay the ferryman a visit and see if we can't figure out what in the heck we can do to start moving around the different islands and see what we can do to get Kasima down from her tower or maybe get up there and see her. We got to figure out what's going on. But we'll do that next time. So until then, good night, jelly beans. Good night.